Hello, this is Colleen Shoemaker with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Lori Stegman, running for County Commission Position 4. Welcome, Lori. Thank you. Please tell us a little about yourself why you are running for this office, and what unique characteristics you have among all the candidates for this office. Thank you for the question. Yes, so I am currently the District 4 Multnomah County Commissioner, so I am the incumbent. Uh, and a little bit about me, about why I love being a County Commissioner and want to continue for another four years, is that uh, I was adopted, so I'm an immigrant a minority, I'm a small business owner and a mom. I grew up in Gresham in the Rockwood neighborhood, which is one of the poorest neighborhoods uh, in the, in, arguably maybe in, in the state. So I recognize what some of the challenge are, challenges are that folks uh, who grow up or live in poverty experience. And I feel like my background and my life story, I, I feel really blessed and fortunate because I really have lived the American dream. Uh, being adopted, uh, coming over to this country when I was six months old, uh, there were many children uh, who did not survive. I was born in Seoul, South Korea, and some of the viewers may have heard of Holt International. And Harry Holt and Bertha Holt uh, saw a need to rescue thousands of Korean orphans uh, in the late 1950s and early 60s because quite literally uh, these babies were starving and dying. So I've always felt really incredibly blessed uh, to be a U.S. citizen and very proud of my heritage and proud to be an American citizen. And I've lived that American dream. And I know that when folks are given the opportunity to thrive and to grow, uh, that they can really do so if given the opportunities that they need. And so I feel really blessed. And that's what I want to do is really share my lived experience so that others can experience the same types of things that I did. Uh, and, you know, I tell people, I, I think I turned out pretty good. I, I have a, a small business and I've been an elected and I am just so privileged in many ways that I feel like if all of our community members were offered these same types of services and help along the way, that they too can thrive. And I really want to make sure that those less fortunate are not forgotten. Thank you. How do you think the members of the Multnomah County Commission should address the issues caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and its effects on the county health system and its homeless services? Yeah, that's a great question, Colleen. There's so much that we have done in a very, very short period of time. In less than a month, Multnomah County has stood up 450 beds uh, in our houseless emergency shelters. So as we all know, social, or actually it's called physical distancing now, is what we need to do in order to control this pandemic. So we've added 450 beds to our 18 shelters uh, because we want to make sure that houseless folks can maintain that physical distancing. We've also added about 120 beds uh, for folks that might be uh, discharged from the hospital or who might be experiencing symptoms. Uh, and then we've also invested in uh, a lot of folks are at risk or experiencing domestic violence. So uh, we've invested in uh, motel vouchers for, for that at-risk population. Uh, we've also expanded uh, food. Uh, we've invested $260,000 through our Joint Office of Homeless Services uh, because we know that houseless residents, uh, those folks don't have access to the same types of things uh, that most of us have. So um, we enacted our first emergency declaration in March on March 11th and then just last week our board extended that emergency declaration for another 90 days mm -hmm. and what the first declaration really did is it included an eviction moratorium for our renters we know that people are that are renting we want to make sure that they have housing stability and so this 
uh, extension is for an additional 90 days. Uh, and we want to just make sure that people have safe housing uh, and that they don't have to move around a lot in the community. Uh, we also, oh, go ahead. Well, I, I'd like to have time for some more questions. Sure. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. So what role can the county government play in making housing more affordable? Uh, yes, yeah, so some of the things that we've done uh, in housing is um, what, what I would like to do is something around a community land trust. And for those folks who maybe haven't heard of that, that's where um, if the county owns property, sometimes we get uh, properties reverted back to us uh, if property taxes are not paid. So what I'd like to see is a potential program where we take those properties, we have them remodeled, and then we can sell them to low income families. Then we bank the land, meaning that we keep ownership of the land, and then and that family can buy the house at a reduced price. And then later on, if that family decides to move, they can sell that house and they can take their equity with them. And then because we own the county land, uh, then we are able to resell that property to another low income family. So it's really about providing more units that are more affordable for more folks. Thank you. How do you assess the state of mental health treatment in the county and what opportunities exist for positive change? That's definitely an area where we need more resources. So one of the things that I've been really happy about is that the county recently purchased a building in downtown Portland. This will be our first behavioral resource center. And we hope to have about 42 beds of emergency shelter along with 30 uh, longer term kind of transitional housing. And this will be a place where folks can come and get a meal, they can store their, um, their belongings in lockers, they can get uh, mental health, uh, they can work with our providers in employment search, uh, they can have access to a computer. So this is an area where we really, really need to have more investments and one of the most pressing issues that we really have. And as, as we all know, there have been disinvestments in mental health. So anything that the county can do to make sure that there are more resources, uh, I want to be really supportive of. Thank you. We have just about a minute left. So uh, with this question, the National Association for the Education of Young Children surveyed its member daycare providers and preschools and learned that a significant number would not survive a pandemic-related closure of more than two weeks. Does the county have a role in ensuring working parents have a place where their children can receive care? Yes, I believe that we do. Commissioner Vega Peterson, uh, my fellow uh, commissioner has been leading the charge on a preschool for all task force. So we've done a, a deep dive in uh, looking at what recommendations should be made uh, to address childcare. So uh, things like capping preschool costs to like 7% of a household income, uh, and then also addressing uh, having more culturally specific uh, early childhood uh, care is really important, and then how we deliver uh, that care as well. So they're looking at all those different types of opportunities. Uh, we know that childcare is so expensive that uh, the investment, the return uh, for every dollar that we invest is seven to $10 that we get back in return. And then at the county level, uh, as you know, we have many essential workers. Uh, we've been trying to help support our essential workers by helping to subsidize their childcare services as well. Well, thank you very much for that. Thank and you. Thank you for your time. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.